Emotions were running high at Craven Cottage last month before Fulham's fixture with Sunderland, when the club remembered one of its favourite sons, Johnny Haynes. Nostalgia was in the air as Fulham chairman Mohamed Al Fayed, Haynes's many friends, and his widow Avril witnessed the unveiling of a lifelike bronze statue to honour the man they called the Maestro. Haynes was killed in a car crash three years ago to the day. A group of fans raised the funds required to cast the Haynes statue, a fitting tribute to the man many believe to be the club's greatest ever servant. It's just celebrating a memory of one of the greatest players, son of Fulham Football Club. And it's an example for all what exists in players to know when someone really is a star. Johnny Haynes was born on the 17th of October 1934. He joined Fulham as a schoolboy in 1952, making a record 657 appearances in an astonishing 18-year career with the Cottagers. He captained England 22 times in 56 appearances and in 1961 was inspirational, scoring twice in a record 9-3 demolition of Scotland. Little wonder Italian giants AC Milan were keen to lure him abroad. I'm very happy about the salary I'm getting. It's not as much as I would have got if I'd have gone to Italy, but uh, I think what I'm losing, it'll be worth, you know, to stay in this country with my family and friends. Haynes made history as England's first £100 a week player after one of his teammates instigated the abolition of the £20 a week maximum wage. I was able to do him a bit of a favour <laughs> for when he hit through balls for me. <laughs> Widely regarded as one of the best passers in this or any other era, when Haynes' contemporaries talk about him, their fondness and respect for the man shines through. He was unbelievable because he could appear to have his back to you. He's here like this and you're down the field and you turn and the ball will be at your feet. His untimely death on the 18th of October 2005 devastated the club and those who knew him. The 71-year-old left an indelible imprint on Fulham and as a mark of respect, a minute's silence was held four days later at the next home game against Liverpool. A deeply emotional time, especially for Tosh Chamberlain, Johnny's best friend. I phoned Johnny one hour before he died and when he had the crash and he was just going to pick Avril up in the car and I heard it on the telly and I couldn't believe it because I'd only just, it was his birthday. Haynes died the day after the crash and tributes immediately started to flood him from all over the world for a man who will live forever in the memories of Fulham fans.